Hi, today I'm going to take you through the install of an Emu Wing kit into a 200 series Land Cruiser. Now this also applies to currently to our Y62 and 150 Prado. Now the main parts of the complexities around this one, the time consuming part, is, is the cutting of the interior trims. Multi-part interior trims just take that additional bit of work, um, A, to remove them, cut them and reinstall them. So, as you'll see now, we've actually completely cleared the back of this Land Cruiser and make life a lot easier for us. So there were a full drawer system, um, cargo barrier, all that's been taken out to allow us to fully remove those interior trims from the back of the car. Now we can work with the lower interior, the big black lower interior trim over the wheel arch still in place, but it is much easier if you can remove it. So we'll start by getting all those trims off. This is a process to get those off. Basically removing the, the seatbelt mounts, the, the third row top, this is the second row lower mount. All these actually go through that lower interior trim. So to get that off, we need to get all these undone. There we go, we've got that one out. And now we also need to remove this lower trim. This is second row seat, so uh, the lower door trim. Because the, the, the real arch trim in the back actually goes underneath this. So just undo that screw, it's 10 mil, and just pop it out. We're now ready to start pulling off all that interior trim. Just be careful because it does actually move back slightly and beware there may be wiring connected to the back of it as well. Okay, so out comes that huge piece of trim. And down there you'll see that there is some wiring that, that was detached to the back of that. So just beware if you're removing it. This rear trim here just pops off. And now we've just got to undo this 10 mil bolt here to be able to remove the, the cover that over the seat belt. This is like the rear door pillar. So it just pops out at the bottom and then there's two clips at the top it's got to come over. Once all that's off, we can now remove this very top trim. This is an airbag deployment trim, so it's got clips up there. Now you can remove them, we just cut them, they're no good anymore anyway. Now when removing these windows, be really careful with Stanley knives and stuff. Because of the shape of the body underneath, it's really easy to do paintwork damage. Get in touch with a glazier that has one of these wonderful little tools. Absolutely guaranteed, no paint damage. Nice and clean and easy. This is why we always encourage people to stick with the, the glaziers to do these jobs. And there we go, that's pretty much out. Just a little bit of glue at the front. I've got to a cut and it's out. So now I just have to remove these little clips. These are the, the positioning clips from the factory and then cut back this glue. We don't need to fully remove it, we just need to cut it back. It's actually a great surface to glue to. Again, just be really careful not to do any scratches on the bodywork. So just take your time. Knife slides through it quite easily as you can see. We'll actually remove that front section later in the video just to clean up the install. It's not necessary, but we think it looks a lot better. So there you go, the glue's all cut back now. I'm gonna replace this top interior trim and now I can mark it up for cutting. So putting the frame back in place, this is exactly where you're going to be installing the frame later on. And then we're gonna mark up just those top bolt holes at the top. Just up there, we're gonna make some marks so we know exactly where to cut for the support brackets and the bolts. We will actually show you later how, we can, how we're gonna make those cuts. This is just marking it all up ready. And now just pop off those two, move it forward so I can mark exactly where the bolts are gonna sit against that trim as well. Once we've got those marks, we can remove that trim again. Now we're just marking up where we need to cut that trim. At this point, it's a good idea to actually replace all the interior trims and mark them all for cutting before gluing the frame. Unfortunately, we miscapturing it on this video. Now, once I've got my marks on there, I'm actually gonna pull this trim back out. You'd have all the trims marked, so remove them all again in preparation for fitting your frame. Now, what we do is we actually transfer those marks on the front to the back so we know exactly where we need to cut. 
There you go, now there you can see how much we're actually taking off. It's about five mil, plus an additional five mil for where the support rackets are gonna sit against the frame. Now once it's all marked up, the actual cut, all we're using there is a flat wheel on a grinder to take that back. Neatness is everything on this part. So just take your time to get these cuts just so. This is a bit that actually takes all the time with this install. Getting all these cuts really nice and removing and reinstalling all these interior trims. So removing all the fluff. And then we grab a, just a simple deburring tool just to take that edge back nice and clean. If you're not sure, if you're not comfortable with the grinder, you can always use a hand file. We actually use a hand file to finish off, just to really tidy things up. There we go. Just to get all, that all nice and square and clean and straight. It doesn't really stand out, but it's nice just to get a really nice finish on these modern cars. into the second where the second support bracket's gonna sit. Now the support bracket actually clamps the body, so it actually sits between this trim and the inside of the car body. So then cuts are just about complete now. Then we'll move on to actually cutting where the bolts hole, hole, holes are gonna sit, or the bolts are gonna sit against this trim. Now remember we've done the, the remark for the support bracket and the bolts. So now we've got it all cut, we can pop it back in place. Test, test, and test again. This is really important that this trim is back in place before gluing the frame. So you can see we're getting the support brackets up behind the body and the frame in front of the body or outside. Applying some clamps, we're happy with the cuts. So now we're gonna use masking tape, A, to mark exactly where the frame's gonna sit, and to aid us in cleaning up the glue later on in the, the installation process. So if any glue squidges out of that gap, it's quite easy to wipe off rather than getting it all over the car. So just going all the way around the window with the masking tape. Once we're done, we can remove the frame. And then it's time for a really good clean up, getting rid of all them yucky fingerprints, all the greasy paw marks from around the window so that we can go on to applying the glue. So this is just a simple wax and grease remover. Just anywhere where I might have touched. Just to ensure a really good bond. We're also gonna do the back of the frame, make sure that's all nice and clean. And again, nice and free from any of them grubby fingerprints. Now applying glue approximately a five millimeter bead towards the inside edge, increasing that bead to six, seven millimeters around the corners. You see there's, there's a lot more room for it to spread around the corners. Now, once the glue's all done, we've now got, got the frame in place. As we can't get clamps on the top there, you can see the interior trim's back in place, that top interior trim. We can't get clamps on there. So we're just tightening up these screws, not too much. We don't wanna squeeze all the glue out. We just wanna ensure a good bond. We will tighten them up later in the process. So this is just tightening the frame to the support brackets and pulling it back onto the glue. Now you also wanna apply clamps in that top corner just to pull it right in. And this helps with door placement later on. Here's a bit of a view of where we're up to now. Now we can go along and get all the other trims cut and ready for installation. While that glue's all drying off, we can get all this done. It's, it's a, only a few mil needs to come off. As you can see on this trim, there's a good trick there. We're actually only going back to the foam. So that foam, piece of foam that's stuck on the inside there, that's all we're trimming off of that trim. Again, clean it up with a deburring tool. And just to make sure that cuts nice and straight. We can finish up with a file, but we actually got this quite good with the grinder. Again, just using a flap wheel. There's not enough material to take off to make it worth trying with a actual cutting disc. Just 
be very careful because these are a very aggressive flap wheel and, and can easily damage the panel. We can easily go too far. So 24 hours later, the glue is now dry or, or cured enough for us to continue, not fully dry. And now we can start attaching the hinges. There's a, not a lot of room to work with on these, on these 200s. So we start with the two front bolts first, just pop them through the hinges, get the M4 nylocks on the back. Excuse the shaking and my paws being in the way. There we go, we've almost got that in now. We're just gonna push that bolt up there. Now you can see it's such a tight fit. I actually just use a screwdriver to actually push the top of that bolt up. So that I could get the rear bolts in. It just keeps twisting and getting caught on the top interior panel. There we go, just so that I can push that other bolt up that little bit and up she goes into place. Now I can put through those two rear bolts, just the M4 nylocks again. Sorry about the shaking and fiddling. They are such tiny little bolts for my little for my big old hands. Okay, now we've got the four bolts in on the hinge. We can move to the back hinge. Same process again. Two bolts through. Into the front of the hinge. There's a bit more room towards the back of that bracket. And once the ones are done, we can move the hinge forward to allow us to get the back bolts in. Pretty fiddly getting in that little space, but there we have it. Moving the hinge back up into place. Now when placing these hinges, generally go for about an eight mil, keep the hinge protruded about eight mil from the frame. Now we can tighten up those support bracket bolts. Lose somewhat cured and then tighten up just the two opposing bolts here. We may need to adjust the door panel later, so no need to do them all up. Now, once the door, I've got the door panel in there, I'm just using the handles to hold that in place. So sit the, hand, the door panel over the frame, close the handles off and it will hold itself in place while you get those pan heads in. That rear one's quite a stretch, I'm just lucky to have really long arms and then pop a few spaces underneath once all the pan heads are in place. We haven't tightened them up yet. Now we're just checking our gaps, paying particular attention to the gap between the door panel and the second row door. There you go, there's that big stretch. Now I can start doing up them pan heads. I've got a good position on the door. We actually had this car for three days, so we've put the cargo barrier back in on the second day and refitted the drawers and interior trims, as you can see. Now we're just gonna get the other pan heads done up. As I've got the crash barrier back in, I couldn't reach this one with it all closed up. But the other two are holding the door position while I get these two done up. Also try to get a straight line along those pan heads. That one's not quite there, just gotta adjust it a little tiny bit. There we go, now we've got a straight line across the four pan heads. And now I notice that that door's sitting proud at the front edge there. So I do need to now adjust the depth of that door. We can do that just by undoing the, M4, the two opposing M4 bolts. Once they're loose, we can just simply push the door panel back to the depth we, 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 no, we require. There we go. However, by doing that, it's actually lowered the door slightly. So now I need to just loosen off my pan heads, reinsert my spacer, double check my gaps, especially that door. I'm just using the handle to hold the panel shut for me. 
and now I can tighten up that pan head again. Checking clearances, tightening up the other pan head. It's starting to come together. There you can see we've reinstalled all the interior trims there. You can see the gap of what, where we've cut it off. It still meets the, the panel, the frame nice and straight. The cuts are nice and clean. Now we can tighten up these, the back of the pan heads, just pinch them up, we don't have to go mad. And attach the gas struts. There we go, we've got a functioning emu wing. Now we're going to clean up that bit of glue at the front that's still visible. Now this is just a scraper set that you can simply buy from Bunnings. Um, I think it's called a corking or silicon removal kit. They sell it in the paint section. Most hardware stores have no doubt carry them. So once I've scraped off the majority of it using the plastic scraper that doesn't damage the paint. I'm just coming back over with some wax and grease remover which is dissolving the final parts of the glue left on the paintwork. It just gives it a really nice finish. This isn't an essential or part, a necessary part of the installation. It just really cleans up the final installed product. Bit of elbow grease. 30 minutes or so and it's all off. This isn't necessary on the Y62 and 150 because our frame actually covers that as well. There we go, almost there. Just got to dissolve that off. And look at that finish. And now I'm just going to tighten up these two height adjustment screws on the hinges. Just as a matter of course, we do these up. This just limits the height the hinge can actually be open to. <clears throat> now, sorry about the light, my big head's in the way. Now with the chalk pen, I'm just going to mark where the door panel sits in relation to the frame. You'll see in a second when I finally move my head. There we go. Now you can see the marks I've made around the door panel. This allows me to place the rubber shortly. There we go. Now I'm going to feed the rubber through the hinges, keeping it well away from dust and the floor. And now I have a bit of a clean up where I want to place the actual rubber, being careful not to remove my chalk lines. Just a bit of wax and grease remover, just clean off any grubby prints again. Ensuring a good adhesion between the, the glue and the um, door panel. Okay, starting at the bottom centre and just following outside of my chalk marks. Now when you get to the top of the panel, you actually want to really tighten up on those chalk marks. We want this rubber as close to the hinge as possible at the top to prevent rolling. I'm actually sticking it exactly where the face plate meets the door panel. I also make it a little bit higher between the two hinges, just a millimeter or so, just to improve water runoff. Continuing around, spaced out slightly more from my chalk marks and coming back to meet in the center. Now when I cut this off, I just overcut it by a few mil, two, three millimeters, and then tuck it back under. This gives us a really good meat point. Then coming in with a roller, ensure all the air bubbles are out from underneath that glue, that tape, make sure we're getting a good bond to the door panel. That's it. Now I've cleaned up all my chalk marks. I will clean it up better later, that's just getting off the worst of it. And we have an emu wing, fairly functional. Now at this point, don't fully close it. What we want to do is tuck that rubber up 
initially as the glue hasn't fully adhered we need to ensure that that rubber hasn't rolled so i'm just tucking it up inside there try and make sure it's nice and straight that's it not moving it at all it's still stuck to the door Once I'm done with that, I'll close the door down fully and apply pressure to that um, rubber. Now, as you can see, there was a little gap with the cam. So I've taken the cam off, just one little screw, and just give it a little bend, just a very light bend, and test to make sure that it's now pulling the door panel down and compressing that rubber. A couple of little clips in your kit. These just cover up these holes. Feel free to use a little bit of glue if you wish. Generally, we don't. Sometimes the holes get bent with that tool that we use to remove the window, and we do need to use a little bit of glue in there. And there we go. We've got a pretty much complete emu wing ready to go. All you need to do is get some heat into that door panel while it's closed, ensure that weather strip's been heat set, give it a few days for the glue to fully cure, and we're all done. We've now got great access to the back of our car.